Cinema was first properly introduced back in 1888 when Thomas Edison and his assistant William Dixon set out to create a device that could record moving pictures, which was then unveiled as the kinetoscope in 1890. However, the invention wasn't properly announced until 1892 and was only first shown to audiences on the 14th of April 1894 when Edison built the kinetograph parlours, which allowed the public to go and view his films. The only problem with the kinetoscope was that it only allowed people to view films one at a time. This was then replaced in 1895 when the Lumiere brothers introduced the cinematograph, a projector that could show 16 frames per second and allow multiple people to see at once. The first short films by the Lumiere brothers only consisted of simple movements shown with the short films Baby's Lunch, Tick Riding and Exiting the Factory. However, none of these films had a proper storyline to them until later on that year when the Lumiere brothers made The Sprinkler Sprinkled, a short 45 second long film which had a storyline to it and was the first short film in the comedy genre. Film had now gathered enough attraction for there to be the first permanent cinema on the 19th of October 1896, called the Vitascope Hall. This cinema was specifically designed for showing motion pictures and is still up to date. Film was still the same as normal, with them incorporating storylines and no editing until 1899 when French magician Georges Méliès became the film industry's first filmmaker to edit his short films to artificially arrange scenes to tell a narrative story. The short film was called The Conjurer and it used a jump cut to get an actress out of a shot. Melier did this by cutting the film and placing it in a different order. In 1902, Le Voyage de la Lune was created and was the first ever film to be placed in the science fiction genre. This film was also one of the most influential films at the time, as its incorporation of a set and the effects that came with it. However, the film was only 13 minutes long, unlike the first feature length film, The Story of the Kelly Gang, which was shown in Australia in 1906. This feature film was short compared to other films of the day, it being 1 hour and 10 minutes long, but it was a lot longer than all of the other films coming out at the time. Because of the first feature length film being made, Britain finally built their first purpose built cinema in 1907. By 1914, the UK had now gained a number of 5,000 cinemas and many feature length films have been made. Most of the major Hollywood motion picture studios had been established by the early 1920s. This included Warner Brothers, Fox, Paramount, Universal and Columbia. Despite the films themselves being silent throughout the early era of cinema, sound has always been strongly linked with film since the very beginning of its conception. Theatres from the 1890s to the 1920s would play films alongside an organist or a pianist. Some films with a higher budget would even have full orchestras to accompany their films. But even the concept of syncing video and audio was something filmmakers wanted from the very start. In 1894, Edison and Dixon began experimenting with merging video and sound, using the creation they made called the kinetophone. Despite having the ability to play video and audio together, the kinetophone had a major issue of not being able to properly sync the video and the audio. Because of this, the system was mainly used to play music alongside the film. As well as this, the amplification of the kinetophone was too weak for large audiences to properly hear, so most theatres continued to use live musicians to accompany their films. However, in 1919, European inventors Josef Engel, Joseph Masoli and Hans Volt created a system called the Triurgon, which recorded audio onto the film reel, therefore removing the syncing issue. Film companies and theatres, however, weren't willing to accept pre-recorded sound as a proper element of cinema, thinking it was just a fad and that it would pass on, as well as thinking that implementing sound would be a huge financial risk due to the new technology they would have to license and the live performers they would have to lay off. Because of this, film companies refused to use pre-recorded sound in their films and continued to create silent films. This was until 1925 when Warner Brothers bought a new system called the Vitaphone, which allowed video and audio to be played together with relatively decent syncing. They went on to release the film Don Juan in 1926, which became the first film to use a pre-recorded soundtrack. However, the biggest breakthrough Warner Brothers made with sound was in 1927 with the film The Jazz Singer, the first film to ever have synchronised dialogue, wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. which included singing and an improvised monologue by the main character. Oh, I'm going to take you to Coney Island. Yeah. Yes. However, only 25% of the film included dialogue, with the rest continuing as a standard silent film. The success of the jazz singer completely shocked the film industry and led to many companies starting to introduce sound into their films. 
resulting in movies such as They're Coming to Get Me in 1927, the first short film to be made with movie tone, a system that was able to play video and audio that was perfectly synchronised. Lights of New York in 1928, the first film to include dialogue throughout the whole duration of its runtime. Well, it ain't nobody else. Now what do you want? And the Mickey Mouse cartoon, Steamboat Willie, released in the same year, which was the first cartoon to include synchronised sound. From the year 1927 to 29, around $300 million were invested into adding sound into films, resulting in 75% of films to be considered talkies by 1929. And by 1932, silent films were abandoned and forgotten about by both filmmakers and audiences. The inclusion of sound created the opportunity for completely new styles and genres of films to be produced, such as musicals, spoken comedy, Gentlemen, I bring you food. Animation with dialogue. Hello there. What's the matter? And horror with eerie soundtrack. You killed her as I am about to kill you. The progression of sound technology in film remained relatively stagnant throughout the 1930s. The United States agreed that the Fox owned movie tone and the RCA photophone would be their standard sound system, and Europe had the Tobus Klang film Triogon as their standard system. And filmmakers remained comfortable with the quality of sound in their movies they were creating. No real progress was made until 1940 when Disney created Fantasia, the first film to be created using multi channel sound with a system they called Fantasound. This created the concept of surround sound, as Fantasia used multiple audio channels to output their sound, specifically having left, centre and right front channels, and left and right rear channels. Many theatres shortly after began to implement surround sound to increase the quality of their films. Colour is a vital part of cinema today with only three exclusively black and white films coming out in the last year and two others using lack of colour in specific scenes. While black and white was the only option at first and continued to be popular for some time, it's now only used for artistic purpose and colour has become the default. The first coloured film was released by Edward Turner in 1901. Before filmmakers figured out how to add colour onto film, they would hand paint the reel frame by frame. This would be very time consuming but presented a stunning shot as seen in Annabelle Serpentine Dance in 1895. Other techniques used to add colour included tinting, which turned the entire frame to one colour. This was cheaper and less time consuming, but didn't have the same effect. A challenge that filmmakers of the time had to overcome was projecting colour. One development that Turner began to work on before his death was kinema colour, which was finished after his passing. The technique boiled down to two film reels, one green and one red which were pressed together to create an optical illusion of colour to the eye. Despite only using two colours, this technique resulted in a fairly realistic image, although some problems that did occur were trails of red and green from movement within the frame, as well as the lack of blue. The film itself was also prone to scratches. In 1926, Technicolor introduced a new dye transfer process that coloured in a similar way to tinting. The first film to use this was The Viking in 1928. This technique allowed for the iconic shot from The Wizard of Oz in 1939, where Dorothy walks out of the sepia-coloured house into the Land of Oz, which was full of vibrant colours. This brought a magical element to the story, proving that colour was no longer just there to represent the natural world, but could also be used to add to the story. The 1930s to 40s were very impactful for the Technicolor legacy as films like Gone with the Wind in 1939 and La Cucaracha in 1934 won Academy Awards. This helped bring Technicolor to the forefront of cinema as it kept rising in popularity year in year out. Going into the second half of the 20th century, different techniques were being pioneered like Eastman Color and the Free Strip Technicolor camera. All of these would be stepping stones towards the digital colored films of today.